So no matter how you define it, most definitions, when they're talking about social responsibility, take into account ethics, trust, responsibility, service, and societal impact. Welcome to the Smart Talk series, the show for professionals who want strategies, tips, and real talk about all things PR, marketing, and social media. Your host is Melissa Vela Williamson, an award-winning, accredited, and nationally recognized PR pro and communication thought leader. And now your host, Melissa Vela Williamson. Hello, and welcome to season two of the Smart Talk series. This is episode one of this season, where we are diving into practicing social responsibility. During this six-part series, I'll be explaining 360 degrees around what social responsibility is, how it's practiced today in organizations, what's missing in those strategies, and how we can each make the world better through our own professional work. If you're new to the Smart Talk series, I kick off each season on my own, bring in more industry experts to discuss these topics with, and then end the series with final tips and insights to consider. Check out season one for topics all about communicating through turbulent times, because it's still bumpy out there, and moving with change is important to our success as PR, marketing, social media, advertising, and really all communication professionals. Let's get started with this season's focus, practicing social responsibility. If you're unfamiliar with corporate social responsibility, or as it's written out often, CSR, you may not realize you're taking part of it as an individual when you participate in your organization's United Way campaign, recycle items in the office, or donate in a food drive. These are all examples of corporate social responsibility, but lately, Social responsibility has been getting increased focus due to political and social movements. How CSR is defined is different depending on what area of business you're in, what trade association you follow, what type of professional you are. For example, the Public Relations Society of America defines corporate social responsibility as a voluntary corporate commitment to exceed the explicit and implicit obligations imposed on a company by society's expectations of conventional corporate behavior. The American Marketing Association calls corporate social responsibility an evolving management practice that brings things like sustainability, accountability, and philanthropic efforts into a company's business model. Let me be clear about all of this. You don't have to be part of a corporation to be socially responsible. This is something we as professionals can do on our own. To me, social responsibility is the effort an organization or individual makes to benefit their community or larger society through their work. As an individual, to me, serving on boards, committees, commissions, volunteering my time with nonprofits is a way that I'm socially responsible in helping the community. Last night, I just talk with our board of directors for our homeowners association and was very excited because I was able to propose and help pass an initiative to start a little free library in our neighborhood. Now I'm going to be the librarian I've always dreamt about being, but for my community where kids will be able to donate books that, you know, are kind of crowding their homes and pick up books and take them home if, if they need something new to read. And that's a small example, but there's little ways we can really promote good things in our environments without having to have the backing of a corporation behind us. So no matter how you define it, most definitions, when they're talking about social responsibility, take into account ethics, trust, responsibility, service, and societal impact. Socially responsible professionals often act as a moral guide for the betterment of others. But how do we get started with social responsibility principles? I'm going to give you four tips to get started practicing social responsibility, no matter where you sit in an organization or if you're a business owner like myself. Number one, assess your position. You want to first consider what is the mission of your organization 
What is your vision and how does the organization brand itself? Are you able to raise awareness around the issue that your organization has a proven record of supporting? If you're thinking about this as an individual, do you have a pattern of taking responsibility in that topic or for any missteps around that topic? Does your leadership positively encourage change and start set from within? You want to really be careful when you do your assessment to have an honest look at where you are around practicing social responsibility, particularly on something around diversity, inclusion, and equity, because jumping into action to solve societal problems isn't wise if it isn't authentic or you can't really help. Number two, ask tough questions. If you heard me on season one, we talked about real talk and the value of having those tough conversations. You have to start with listening. Listening is the best starting point for assessing a situation or issue. If you're tackling diversity and inclusion, you want to first talk with employees from different backgrounds in your organization and ask them for advice and constructive feedback. They would have your best viewpoint to help you understand what social responsibility principles are actually happening at your organization and what may need to be fixed. Companies can certainly hire outside professional help and facilitating some of those hard conversations often benefits from having that outside consultant or facilitator manage some of those sensitivities, but always work with your employees first to give them a chance to be a part of that process and to be listened to. You want to include their thoughts and their talents within your work and as you put together your plan or your practice. The last thing you want is to make your existing employees feel excluded during this process. Number three, collaborate together strategically. Corporate social responsibility or social responsibility practices are a commitment. They're a commitment to go beyond what's mandatory or at the minimum for a business to operate. So it's definitely not an overnight process. Working through ethical economic or legal responsibilities and ideals may take hosting regular meetings or listening tours with your staff to a structure an effective social responsibility program. For example, before you tell the public how diverse you are, that reality needs to be a part of your culture and proven from within. Your employers are going to be your biggest brand ambassadors if you do things right, but if your diversity and inclusion efforts are only at surface level, Any external messaging you send out there into the world will be hollow. And today's employees may actually call you out on it. Corporate social responsibility or social responsibility itself should not be left up to just one department or one person in an organization. I've seen how even the smallest of companies tend to work in silos without considering how other departments or areas of the companies may want to be a part of an initiative or may have resources to help. That's a recipe for blind spots and uneven program execution or support. If the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, they won't work well together. Ideally, a good social responsibility plan should come from, or at least be championed by top leadership and shared down through other departments. And number four, be thoughtful and planful. Remember, what's helpful to society is going to change over time. You're always going to want to consider the core social responsibility principles that we mentioned before, but then apply them to what matters most now. I think a lot of us realize today what we worried about pre-COVID, that can be totally swept aside today. Don't jump on any social media train that just rolls on by. Instead, think through what actions you can take what messaging you can share, and what will withstand the shifts in public sentiment because they're sustainable to who you are as an organization or as a professional. Before 2020, many companies shied away from these sensitive topics we talk about today. And now employees are looking for organizations that are socially responsible and support efforts that benefit the environment, benefit our health, social justice, politics, gender equality, and even more. Companies should assess what really matters to them, 
What are their core values? What do they want to put money behind and either commit to that space or don't step into it? We have seen too many insensitive social posts from institutions or their leaders that really miss the mark. Planning ahead whenever you can and understanding what your stances are because they become principles to your organization will be critical in the world of social and digital media. Hopefully there's someone in your organization that has a social responsibility background or follows these principles as an individual. A lot of public relations professionals do. If not, consider hiring someone who's experienced and can help your organization put together its core pillars and a plan in this area. It's not flashy work, but social responsibility does right by the community and promotes a long-term success for any organization. And with everything being so uncertain and our time still being turbulent, what's a better way to build for our future? Join me for the rest of this series where we will answer that question. We'll see social responsibility come to life through discussions with more experts on how we safely return to in-person events, how we can create a world where all men and boys are loving and respectful, how social responsibility impacts HR practices, and what it's like to focus on social responsibility full time. Thanks so much for joining me for today's episode. If you want more content like this, check out our site at mbw360.com. There you can read helpful blog posts or sign up to get a monthly email with all kinds of important communication topics. Learn more about my background, ways we can work together, and visit the PR Pro Gear Shop that has mugs, shirts, and new designs for the fall. And as always, think smart and communicate smart, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Smart Talk series. If you learned something or enjoyed our conversation, share on social media or send to a friend. To learn more about this and other communication topics, visit mvw360.com. That's mvw360.com.